Hi, lovely, and welcome back. I have a treat for you today because I'm bringing you behind the scenes into my Metabolic Mastery for Women Over 40 program, and I'm sharing a portion of a call reviewing blood work results for one of my clients. I cover off a portion of her results pertaining to her hemoglobin levels, her A1C related to her blood sugar, as well as her fasting glucose, and I address these three with her and share recommendations on how to address these. So as you listen, I want you to ask yourself one question. How does this apply to me? How can I benefit from this advice? We cover off more than just blood work, but also mindset and ways to balance her blood sugar through meal composition. But before I share the recording, I want to invite you to join me live on October 15 and 16. I'm hosting a two-day free boot camp that's going to change the game. I'm breaking down the 10 biggest mistakes women over 40 are making when it comes to weight loss, and I'll walk you through my step-by-step framework for mastering your metabolism in both peri and post-menopause. Look, I don't care what you've tried before. Maybe you're feeling stuck. Maybe you think it's too late or you've lost hope that you'll ever feel comfortable in your body again. But trust me, there is a solution and I'm here to help you find it. So mark your calendar. During this boot camp, I'm going to show you exactly how to shift your metabolism, shed that stubborn weight, regain your energy, sleep better, and finally ditch the bloating. You'll leave learning exactly what to do to start burning calories and feeling stronger in your own skin. If this sounds like something you need, head over to this website, go.nutritionherway.com forward slash bootcamp, or check the link in the show notes and sign up right now. So pause this podcast and go do it. I'll be waiting right here when you come back. Plus, I'm giving some exciting door prizes and including a scholarship towards my program. Giveaway is really worth over $1,000, so you really don't want to miss this. Do you feel unrecognizable since hitting your 40s? Is losing those stubborn five to 10 pounds despite your best efforts a constant struggle? Are you always tired, bloated, and relying on caffeine or sugar to get you through the 3 p.m. slump? In this podcast, you're gonna find practical tools to shed weight, regain your energy, and feel like yourself again as you navigate your 40s and beyond. Hi, I'm Lara, a registered holistic nutritionist and life coach with over 10 years of experience helping women achieve their health and weight loss goals. Get ready to learn how your hormones and metabolism are shifting and be equipped with simple nutrition, exercise, and stress management tools so you can navigate peri and postmenopause with confidence and vitality. Now go grab your infused water because it's time to dive in. So we're comparing June of 2022 to the current one. So that was the last one I had. So I kind of just populated the things that we we had. So hemoglobin is good. I mean, it's consistent. You're at ideal. Excellent. That's good news. That is actually really good news. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of women have low hemoglobin. And that's an indication not of necessarily low iron. So hemoglobin, 70% of the iron stores in your body is stored in your hemoglobin. So for people where their hemoglobin is low, it doesn't mean that they are low iron. It's just that they're missing a lot of nutrients in order to move iron. So the fact that yours is at ideal or close to like, yeah, it's at ideal or even in 2022 is close to ideal. That's a really, really good sign because that's an indication that your other nutrients are are at healthy levels. And yeah, so that's that's good. So you're well nourished, okay, from a micronutrient perspective. So that's great news. Okay. Uh A1C, I'm not loving it. Okay, so A1C is the average of the last three months of your blood work, um, of glucose levels in your blood. So it went from 5.5. Ideally, it should be under five. So it went from 5.5 to 5.8. It's not like dramatically different, but as you get to six and then over, the doctor will start to talk to you about the risk of diabetes. I don't know if they mentioned oh. anything to you, but it's they, um, Yeah, because it's in the family, it was more of a, oh, we should check this one more often was kind of the comment I got. So, okay. But yeah. 
Yeah. So I don't love it. Okay. So okay. it's not I don't a huge either. jump. <laughs> yeah. So you, the, it's, we got to be watchful of this. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say, I know it's, it's probably partly my fault because I love sugar in my desserts. And if I'm stressed, that's what I go for. Yeah. Is yeah. Chocolate and stuff. So trying yeah. to get out of that habit. I think my biggest stumbling block. So, so I would say, okay, so I'm going to challenge your words, Arlene. So instead of your stumbling block, this is your greatest area of focus because, okay, yeah, right? Like the, it's, the, it's within your power and you don't need to get rid of it. Like I'll tell you, Arlene, I used to live off of sugar. When I say that, I don't mean it like metaphorically. I lived off of sugar and this is what, yeah, like ice cream, work events. I was in finance. That's what I would like. I'd skip the, the lunch and I'd order just like a massive dessert. I lived off of sugar. So if I could shift and now I don't think twice about sugar, like I'll eat a cake, birthday cake. Oh, that's good to know. Yes. Like, I will get yes. a chocolate bar and say, I'm going to eat one square. And then suddenly the whole thing's gone. Yes. Yes. I, I didn't even think about not eating and just eating the square. Like it was, it was problematic. So if I can change my palate, you can change your palate. It's just about believing that you can. The sugar has no control over you. One. And two, this is a good reason, though, to, to focus for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not pretty. My, I mean, my parents are diabetic, and I'm really mm -hmm. scared. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I see the routine. It's not nice. Not nice. No, exactly. So that goes on your vision, stay <laughs> in your vision statement. And this goes on your area of focus, like in the goals, in the goal section of, you know, that thing, because it's not about, and I would not necessarily focus on not eating sugar. I would focus on like when I've, I've, we've talked about this in the past, when I look at your food logs, there's not sufficient protein. You got to balance your meals because balancing your blood sugar is will ward off the cravings. Okay. So that's one that you that's like would go yeah. on my three. So if, meals. so if I, if I added more protein, that would help you mean? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because those cravings, physical, physiological cravings would dissipate, right? There's physiological and psychological and situational kind of cravings, right? Like physiological is, um, I'm hungry. I'm going to grab something quick. I love sugar. I'm going to do sugar right? Like that's physiological. If you eat a good protein rich lunch or a breakfast or dinner, then, and you have a craving after it's not physiological, it's situational or psychological. Like you're sad, you're bored. Yeah. Like comfort food, comfort food or, or a reward. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or a reward or yeah. I'm sitting in front of the TV and this is just what I do like situational habits. Right. So we got to work on the first one and then two, you got to bring awareness of when it's happening and do diff make different choices, right? Like if, if it's, if it's an issue for you to have the one square, you got to make it either impossible for you to have that square for a period of time. Okay. So it's all about how you phrase it to yourself. First, you recognize this is a choice. This is a, like, I don't want to get diabetes, right? That's a goal of mine. So I'm going to, it's, I'm going to do everything in my power to choose different things. Do I never have sugar? No, it's my personal choice. It's like, you got to tell yourself that I am choosing because as soon as you tell yourself, I can't have that, you're going to want it. <laughs> That's that, very true. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you're just choosing, you're choosing differently. And so when you have a craving, the first question I'd, you got to ask yourself is how is, how is my meal? 
Was it balanced? Did I have enough protein? And you got to focus on protein, Arlene. Like you're, you're a tall yeah. woman. You need protein to function optimally. Is, is it also a fact of like having the right snacks if I don't get enough with meals? Like, you know, yeah. grabbing nuts instead and that For kind sure. of thing. For sure. I know I'm, <laughs> I have to plan that better. So that's probably okay. part of my focus. Yes. Okay, what's easy? I'll grab an apple, but maybe I should be grabbing almonds or something instead. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Almonds, almond butter with, I don't know, uh, we're going to keep it lower carb, even fruit, like just for a period of time, just to kind of wean yourself off of that sweet taste, like do almond butter with celery or um, I don't know, like uh, rice cakes like they're a little bit of carb, but at least they're, they're not that sweet flavor. So I'd kind of just get yourself used to having different go-tos, right. That aren't um, sugary, that aren't that sweet taste that, that would be, that would be the direction that I would go in, go in because you want to like, when you have something sweet, you want it to shock you as to how sweet it is. And the way to I will go. say yeah. I used to love marshmallows and s'mores when we were camping, and this summer I don't like them anymore. So okay, I call that progress. <laughs> that is progress. Yeah, that's absolute progress. So that's good. And like the fact that this is five point eight. If we hadn't been doing this, like if you hadn't, we haven't been like you hadn't joined. I would imagine this would be higher, right? Because it's the last three months. So yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't I've been trying to focus, but it's yeah. not far enough yet in the right direction. Yeah, but it will be. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's it, good. Yeah, that's okay. good to know. Um, so random glucose. Now I had a note here. It was four point eight. So anything under five is ac- excellent for a fasted glucose. So this one was not fasted, right? This time, I think in the notes it said you had eaten an hour before. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, they didn't okay. say I needed to fast. So I didn't okay. Stop. Okay. So this isn't an accurate number. Um, so, you know, cause, but this is like the last one was great, but this is too high for a fasted glucose. It should be under, uh, under five. It says six here, but uh, ideal is under five. Um, TSH, they didn't rerun last time. It was good. Anything under two is great. So Arlene. Thank you. Um, yeah, that is good. That helps a lot. Your homework is going to be um, after this call or when you get get a chance to sit down, send me like fill out that one pager and send me a copy of it or um, send me weekly like your goals list and what you're going to work on. And, and even if you're not logging your food in detail, just take pictures because I want to just maintain accountability that you're actually following through and we don't drop the ball on, on this because it will make a significant. Yeah, no, that's, change. that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. I was waiting for that to, for this week, actually. So that's good. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it down later today or tomorrow. And then uh, you can tell me if I missed anything. But, uh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you for listening. Join me each Wednesday and Friday for a fresh episode of the Mastery Metabolism Over 40 podcast. And if you're looking for additional resources to help you navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey, head to nutritionherway.com for free recipes, resources, and a supportive community of women going through this journey just like you. And if you found this episode helpful, others will too. I would love, love, love it if you can leave a podcast review. It's truly the number one way you can thank me and it grows this show, getting this podcast in front of other women just like you who want to learn how to navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey. Signing off in love and health.